Hello viewers, in today's class we are going to discuss yet another important and very conceptual problem from a derived delta function, right? So viewers, uh, we have already uploaded uh, a number of problems uh, related to direct delta function in our uh, previous lectures. So here in this session, we are going to uh, discuss this important integral, right? And uh, this integral is going to utilize uh, some important properties of uh, delta function. So here uh, we have to evaluate the integral from minus infinity to infinity e raised to x uh, cosine of pi x over 3 and the direct delta function of 4x square minus 1, right? So here uh, we see that we have uh, a function, a quadratic function uh, inside this uh, delta function, right? Or in other words, we can say that here uh, we have the direct delta function uh, whose argument is a quadratic polynomial. So we'll see how we can uh, solve these kind of integrals in which we have a function as an argument uh, in the direct delta function, right? So let us start. So here uh, we'll go step by step. So let us first take this uh, integral as i, right? Now see, uh, here we have 4x square minus 1. So whenever we come across with uh, the direct delta function integrals in which the argument is a function, then what we uh, usually do, uh, let us take this function 4x square minus 1 as f of x, right? So the first step is to assume uh, this function as f of x, so we have 4x square minus 1, right? Okay, now the next step is to solve this equation f of x is equal to 0, right? So we have 4x square minus 1 is equal to 0. Then we have 4x square is equal to 1. So x square is 1 over 4. So here uh, we have x is equal to plus minus square root of 1 over 4. So x is plus minus half, right? So obviously we have obtained uh, two roots of this equation fx is equal to 0. So let us name these roots as x1 as plus half and x2 as minus half, right? So uh, first of all, or the first step is to do all this stuff, right? So x1 is uh, plus half and x2 is minus half. And the next step is to see uh, whether these uh, the roots, it falls within the limits, that is the uh, lower limit and the upper limit. And we can easily uh, conclude that uh, both these uh, roots lie in the interval that is from minus infinity to infinity, which is our entire uh, real number line. So once we are satisfied that these uh, roots, uh, which are obtained by solving fx is equal to zero, lie in the interval uh, that is lie within the limits, here the interval is minus infinity to infinity, right? Okay, now let us differentiate f of x. So the derivative f of f prime of x is equal to d by dx of 4x square minus one, right? So this is uh, 8x because the derivative of x square is uh, 2x. So we have four times 2x and the derivative of one is zero. So we have f prime of x is equal to 8x, right? Okay, now the next step is to get the value of uh, mod of f prime of x1 and mod of f prime of x2, right? So mod of f prime of x1 is mod of f prime of half. That is the first root, right? And mod of f prime of x2 is mod of f prime of minus half, right? Okay, so now uh, mod of f prime of half is uh, eight times uh, one over two, right? Okay, so we have mod of uh, four, that is equal to uh, 4. And here we have mod of 8 times 
f prime of minus half can be obtained by taking x is equal to minus half in this expression so we have here minus half so this is mod of minus 4 that is equal to 4 right so the uh, the step is uh, getting uh, mod of f prime of x1 that is 4 mod of f prime of x2 is equal to 4 right so uh, this is the uh, situation now let us write an important property of Dirac delta function so now the important property is delta of f of x right See, uh, we have taken a 4x square minus 1 as f of x. So, this integral is now equal to minus infinity to infinity e raised to x cosine of uh, pi x over 3 and delta of f of x. Right? So, now uh, let us consider delta of f of x uh, with the help of an important property of a delta function so delta of f of x is given by a summation i is equal to 1 to n then we have here a delta uh, that is delta of x minus x i and here we have mod of f prime of x i right so this is a very important property of Dirac delta function which is used whenever we have an argument as a function uh, that is uh, uh, in this case it is a quadratic polynomial. So here uh, we see that i goes from uh, 1 to n right and these i's uh, denotes the number of roots of uh, this equation that is f of x is equal to 0 right so uh, the number of roots of uh, f of x is equal to 0 are n but in this case the we have only two roots that is x1 and x2 so our uh, value of i it runs from 1 to 2 only right so now we can write delta of f of x as uh, sigma i is equal to 1 to 2 delta of x minus x i and mod of f prime of x i and now uh, first taking i is equal to 1 we have delta of x minus x 1 divided by mod of f prime of x 1 then uh, since we have the summation sign so we have here a positive sign then delta of x minus x2 taking i is equal to 2 and here we have mod of f prime of x2. So now x1 is half and x2 is minus half right. So here we have delta of x minus a half divided by mod of f prime of x1 so mod of f prime of x1 is 4 then we have delta of x minus x2 so x2 is minus half so minus and minus becomes plus so here we have half and here we have a mod of f prime of x2 as 4 right so the value of delta of f of x is given by this expression right so let us substitute this value in this integral right so we have i is equal to minus infinity to infinity e raised to x cos of pi x over 3 and then we have here a delta of x minus half over 4 plus delta of x plus half over 4 and here we have dx so now we can take 1 over 4 outside the integral so now our integral is 1 over 4 then we have minus infinity to infinity e raised to x cos pi x over 3 and then uh, we have here a delta of x minus half plus delta of x plus half right and here we have uh, dx. 
So now uh, let us take uh, this function as g of x, right? So we can uh, assume uh, g of x as e raised to x cos pi x over 3. So now this integral i it reads as 1 over 4 minus infinity to infinity g of x and here we have delta of x minus half plus delta of x plus half and here we have dx. Now we can write uh, here uh, two integrals one is minus infinity to infinity g of x delta of x minus half dx plus uh, minus infinity to infinity uh, g of x and then we have delta of x plus half and here we have dx right so now we have to obtain uh, the uh, values of these two integrals and here uh, we'll make use of the definition of direct delta function so now the definition of uh, delta function it goes like this the integral from minus infinity to infinity and if we have some function say g of x and delta of x minus a dx then the value of this integral is equal to g of a right so the delta function says that uh, the value of the delta function it uh, it is equal to the value of this function which is associated with delta function at this point a right so here uh, we have x is equal to a and this spike denotes the value of the delta function right and uh, uh, apart from x is equal to a the delta function is zero in the entire line right so here uh, we have minus infinity here we have plus infinity so the value of uh, delta function it exists only at x is equal to a and at all other points except x is equal to a the delta function is uh, zero right so the value of this integral is equal to the value of this function g of x at this point x is equal to a. So in the first integral uh, we have x minus half. So the value of a is equal to half right and in the second integral we have x plus half. So the value of a is equal to minus half. So we have now 1 over 4 and uh, the value of this integral is the value of this function at this point that is half and here we have the g of minus half right and g of half and g of minus half can be obtained uh, by uh, taking uh, x is equal to half in this expression and x is equal to minus half in this expression. So now g of half is equal to e raised to half, here we'll take x is equal to half, then cos of pi x, that is x is half, so we have simply pi over uh, 6, right? And this is e raised to half and cos pi by 6 is cos 30 degrees, uh, which is equal to uh, square root of 3, over 2 right and g of minus half is equal to e raised to minus half and cos of uh, taking x is equal to minus half we have minus pi by 6 right and from trigonometry we know that cos of minus theta is simply equal to cos of theta right so cos of minus pi by 6 is simply equal to cos of pi by 6 so this is e raised to minus half cos pi by 6 is cos 30 degrees that is equal to root 3 over 2. So now the value of this integral is equal to 1 by 4 and then uh, for g of half we have e raised to half root 3 over 2 and here we have plus uh, e raised to minus half and root 3 over 2 right 
Now simplifying it, uh, we can take root 3 over 2 outside the uh, this 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 factor so we have root 3 over 8 taking root 3 over 2 common so we have here uh, e raised to half plus e raised to minus half right so viewers the value of this integral i is given by a square root of 3 over 8 e raised to half plus e raised to minus half right and uh, we can also express this uh, uh, expression in some other forms also so now we know that the hyperbolic function uh, that is uh, uh, hyperbolic cosine of x is given by e raised to x plus e raised to minus x over 2 so e raised to x plus e raised to minus x can be written as 2 times the hyperbolic cosine of x right now if we take x is equal to half in this expression we have e raised to half plus e raised to minus half is equal to 2 times cosine uh, h times uh, h half right so now uh, replacing uh, this expression uh, with this one we can now write i is equal to root 3 over 8 uh, times 2 times the hyperbolic cosine uh, of half right so this is 2 4 the 8 so we have root 3 over 4 uh, hyperbolic cosine of half right so the value of this integral i can also be taken as square root of 3 over 4 and we have hyperbolic cosine of half right so viewers this is how uh, by making use of the concept of uh, the definition of Dirac delta function and the properties of Dirac delta function uh, we can evaluate uh, these type of integrals.